The space race of the 1960s was tight. Like, real tight. In fact, Yuri Gagarin went up in uh, April 12th, 1961, and the U.S. followed really close behind only 23 days later with Alan Shepard. And similarly, the Soviets launched the first woman into space, Valentina Tereshkova, in 1963, and the U.S. followed right behind with Sally Ride 20 years later. Seriously. 20 years. But seriously, Valentina was a badass. She was only 26 years old at the time, and she got the job because she was an avid parachutist, and the early Vostok designs actually required the cosmonaut to parachute out of the capsule after re-entry. Turned out they didn't wind up doing that, but still, she went up into space, she spent uh, three days doing 48 orbits around the Earth, and then when she landed, she landed on the border of Kazakhstan and China, and was found by some villagers who invited her for dinner. Which she did. Badass. Valentina certainly deserves her place in space history, but some people believe that she wasn't actually the first woman in space. There may have been someone before her, someone who tragically died during re-entry, and someone whose name has been completely lost to history, but whose final words were recorded on audio tape. When Sputnik went into orbit in 1957, panic ensued throughout the Western Hemisphere. For the first time, there was a Soviet communist presence in space above us. Turns out there wasn't really anything to worry about with Sputnik anyway. All Sputnik really did was just send out a, a message, a little beep, through a radio signal that the Soviets actually published and anybody could go and listen to. And this was something that the U.S. did later when they uh, put up the Explorer 1 satellite. They published the, the frequency, the radio frequency, so people could listen to the signals. And this kind of created a bit of a side fad, which was people listening for signals for satellites. Just like the whole space race was a craze, everybody was following it, everybody was into it, um, it also kind of started this secondary craze of people creating radio listening stations to listen to the satellites that have gone up into outer space. One of the most successful teams at this were the Italian brothers Achille and Giovanni Utica Cordiglia. It's a lot of syllables. These guys were excited about the possibility of listening to these satellites that were going overhead, so they set up sort of a makeshift listening station in their home. They picked up the first uh, satellite, Sputnik, and then they later picked up the Explorer 1 satellite. They also picked up signals from Sputnik 2, which actually had a dog on board, Laika, and um, they actually recorded this sound, which they believed to be the heartbeat of Laika. Their success at capturing and recording some of these satellites actually got them a little bit of fame around their, their hometown there, and they, they used this fame to invest a little bit of money into actually buying an old World War II concrete bunker and setting up their own listening station there that they called Torrey Burt. And at Torrey Burt, they did some groundbreaking radio listening stuff. They actually were able to figure out how to calculate the direction and speed of a satellite by measuring its Doppler effect, the shift in the Doppler effect as the satellite passed overhead. And along the way, they also captured some very strange and unexpected signals. On November 28, 1960, they picked up the signal of an SOS, which is the International Distress Call. Um, and the thing that was interesting about it was that it didn't have that Doppler shift so that they could measure the direction of it. It just kept growing fainter and fainter and fainter, which to them meant that it might have been a human being in a capsule that was flying away from Earth that maybe was going too fast and escaped the Earth's gravity and was just traveling away from Earth, and that's why the signal kept getting weaker. And in February of 1961, they picked up a signal that sounded to them like the heartbeat of a man and maybe some gasping breaths. What's interesting about those recordings, both of those took place on the same day and from the same you know, mission that they believed that they captured, but right after that, the Soviets announced that they did have an unmanned craft that crashed in the Soviet Union. So there's a possibility that maybe there was an actual person on there. 
And of course they listened in and recorded Yuri Gagarin's flight just a couple months later in April of 1961. But the most mysterious one by far was one that they recorded in May of 1961, just a month later. This one was the voice of a Russian woman who was calling out in distress, saying that she felt hot, that she could see flames, and was asking if she was going to crash. The brothers interpreted this to be the final words of a female cosmonaut as she was burning up in the atmosphere. Now, unlike the previous instance where they recorded something and then the Soviets reported an unmanned craft crashing, there were no records at all, released by the Soviet space agency anyway, of uh, any kind of launches or any kind of mission or any kind of failures that happened at that time. So, in a perfect world, that would be the end of it. They said it didn't happen, therefore it didn't happen. But the Soviets had a history, a very known history, of covering up space accidents. You know, again, the stakes were super high. The space race was basically a proxy war between the East and the West, and the Soviets had their own state news agency, so they were able to control the narrative in a way that Western countries just couldn't. In fact, there are now well-documented cases that have come up when uh, documents have been declassified after the fall of the Soviet Union that show that they did actually cover up many space accidents during that time. Some Western sources claim that at least 11 different accidents occurred, fatal accidents occurred between 1961 and 1967 that were later covered up by the Soviet Union. And those are just the ones that they've uncovered. We also know that the Soviets had painted some cosmonauts out of official pictures, which is something that was done back in Stalin's regime when they wanted to erase somebody from history. Very Orwellian. And there's also a story that came up of a cosmonaut named Vladimir Ilyushin who uh, claimed he went up five days before Gagarin, but his, his craft entered too early and he actually landed in China where he was held captive for a year. Now this is all super murky. We don't know what's true and what's not true because they covered up a lot of stuff and the, the truth has been obscured, but it's not impossible to think that this recording of a female cosmonaut could have actually been a failed mission. Of course, there are some problems with this whole uh, scenario. One of them is that as a capsule re-enters the atmosphere, the atmosphere around it ionizes and that causes a radio blackout. So if this person was actually burning out through the atmosphere, there's no way that the brothers would have been able to record the radio signals coming out of it. The other thing is that even after the fall of the Soviet Union, a whole lot of documents were declassified. There was no record whatsoever of any female astronaut or cosmonaut that went up in the early 1960s. And the other is after the fall of the Soviet Union, a lot of documents got declassified, a lot of information got unearthed about some of these covered up accidents, and nothing was in there about this particular mission. And finally, a lot of people question whether or not these two amateur radio astronomers could have picked up on this signal when all these other major listening stations around the world run by huge governments like the United States with a lot more power and a lot more sensitivity weren't able to pick up on this. So some people think they faked it. You know, they got a lot of attention with their recordings and maybe this was a way to just sort of keep that attention. So what do you think this was? Do you think the USSR actually put a female cosmonaut up into space and she died on re-entry? Do you think that these guys made it up? Do you think that they just recorded something else that could have been who knows what? What do you think? Talk about it down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If this is your first time here, maybe check out this video. Google thinks you'll like it. And uh, maybe check out some of my other videos. I come back with stuff on science and mysterious topics every Monday and every Thursday. And if you like this t-shirt, I got many more available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. There's all kinds of cool, fun, nerdy stuff that I think people will tell you you look cool in. Because I get that a lot. I have gotten it.
All right, with that, you guys go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys, take care.